So welcome to Tecnode at Life and my name is Jeff and so today what we're going to do is compare Casa OS and Open Media Vault and find out which is the best for you. So if you find this video helpful make sure you like and subscribe and so you get notifications for new videos as they come out. So first of all both are open source and free to use and modify and they both have very active communities. So both of them basically provide a personal cloud with NAS or network attached storage functionality, media streaming, and app hosting. They both use Docker for software installation and they offer easy-ish, depending on which one we're looking at, deployment and isolation of our different uh, app applications. They both use web UIs to manage the operating system through a web interface. And their target audience is sort of a tech savvy or wannabe tech savvy audience that wants a customizable and powerful home cloud solution or home cloud server basically. So now let's get to differences. And so basically with Open Media Vault, you can get it as an ISO or a complete image and you just Download that, install it, and that will take you to where you want to be. Or you can use a script, and so basically you install Debian and then use the script to install Open Media Vault on top of that. For Casa OS, you need to download Debian, install that, and then you use a script to install Casa OS on top of Debian. So with Open Media Vault, we log in as admin and Open Media Vault. And then we have to set up the desktop, which I already have. And so here you can see we have different preferences, quite a bit actually. So everything from power management to monitoring to network, storage, our services where we have our apps, users, and even diagnostics. And so when we go to Casa OS, we have go, and then we create a username and password. We log in, and so here you can see it's much, 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 much simpler. So basically, it tells us uh, basic system information, how much our CPUs use, how much our RAM, our disk storage, our network adapters, and then gives us some advertisements for things to add. And then we have some, an app store where we can add different apps. On Open Media Vault, we can't really uh, get rid of any of that stuff. So Open Media Vault is more for, uh, it's more, let's say, complex. And so because of that, it can do more things for different things. So you could use this for a home business or a, even a small office where you have different users and you want to do different sort of networking things. And so if you look under networking, we can do proxies or firewall. And then under users, we can set different users and groups. So if we look at Casa OS, so basically there is no place for any of those things. Now the other difference is under Open Media Vault, we can uh, change our storage so we can add disks. We can create software RAID arrays. And again, under, Open, or under Casa OS, that is impossible. But you can do those things, but you just have to do it during your initial installation. Okay, so next we're going to see how easy it is to install something. And so we'll do Casa OS first and then Open Media Vault. So for Casa OS, we're going to go to the App Store. And so we'll pick, so we'll pick Photo Prism, click on that. Remember our logins admin Casa OS, click next steps. And so it starts to install. We can click continue in background. Okay, so it installed. We can look at the settings here. And so we'll check our 
photo prism photo if that's there and gallery and so we go to app data photo prism there's all the photos there and go to gallery and that should be okay there so let's open up photo prism and let's see it was admin cas os so we type in admin Casa OS. And now PhotoPRISM is installed. So pretty much just a few clicks. Now let's try to do the same thing on Open Media Vault. So we go to Open Media Vault. And so for services, we don't have Docker installed yet. And if we go to plugins, and we type in Docker. It's not there. <clears throat> uh, so what we have to do is get it from Open Media Vault Extras. And so we have to put this in there. And so we have to do that in a terminal. So let's go back here and type in Weddy. So we'll install a terminal. Oh, it's already, I already installed it actually. I forgot about that. So we go down to services, go to Weddy, open UI, enter our username. And so we're going to put in root. Oh, and it disconnected for some reason. Let's try that again. And it says connect to host open me vault via port 22 connection refused. It's enabled. <clears throat> uh, let's see, port 22, yes. Password. Oh, users must be assigned to SSH group to log in. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so we want to go to users. Uh, so I was root. So let's add a user then. And so we'll just call this Jeff. And we'll put in two uh, passwords. And we're going to put ourselves in the admin and uh, root group here. We'll put in Sama just in case there. And sudo. And then we're going to click save. Now let's go, oh, and we click apply and yes. Hey, let's refresh Weddy. Type in our username, Jeff. And not connecting. And so uh, right now, without any further things, I don't know why it's not connecting. OK, so after a little research, so the Weddy, pub, the Weddy plugin is actually, actually a Docker image. So you actually have to install Open Media Vault Extras first, uh, SSHing into your computer or to your server, uh, install Open Media Vault Extras, install Docker, then you can install Weddy to actually get the terminal app to work in Open Media Vault. So, uh, yeah, complicated and not easy to figure out uh, without a little Google foo, little Google foo there. So, and then we could install Portainer, and then once Portainer is installed, then once Portainer is installed, then we could actually install. Photo Prism. Uh, so a much more complicated process compared to one or two clicks that was, you know, five minutes worth of work if we could get it working. Now once it's set up, <clears throat> then of course it's much easier to use. But this is a case where 
if you're just starting out, obviously Casa OS is much easier to install. And so basically what we're looking at here is simplicity versus complexity. And so for a home user, simplicity is key in, in my world where I live. And so something like Casa OS would be a better choice. That's what I'm thinking. Now for Open Media Vault, this would be something more where you have a more complex situation where you have more people and you want to do different things. And so uh, I almost think of this as a small office type of thing, unless you have things that you only want certain users to watch or listen to. So then you could create different user profiles or different users where you limit them to what they can do. On Casa OS, there's basically just one user and then the, the files you can make completely read only. So basically anybody can read them, but only the administrator can write to them. Now, one other thing about these two, so uh, Open Media Vault has been around for a while. So basically the, so basically Open Media Vault and TrueNAS were started by the same person or maintained by the same person. So that's why they're so similar, TrueNAS and Open Media Vault. So Casa OS is something completely different. So basically it is server software that's designed to be as simple as possible uh, with limited uh, abilities, but basically can do all the things that most people want to do out of the box. So which one is right for you? Well, that decision is up to you. Uh, for me though, I'm going to be using Casa OS as my main OS on the different installs for basically the simplicity reasons. So that's it for today. Hope you found this helpful. See you next time. Bye-bye.